Hi guys, today we'll be talking about digit DP. So we'll be talking about this concept with the help of a problem given on Scotch by the name of G1 numbers. So the link of the problem is given in the description section, but I'll tell you what it basically asks. It says that you are given two numbers, say N1 and N2, and you have to find the count of numbers between N1 and N2, both inclusive, such that the sum of their digits is a prime number. Let's look at the test case. So here N1 is 10 and N2 is 19, and the answer is 4. So if you list all the numbers between 10 and 19, which are 10, 11, 12, 13, until 90, uh, and so on to 19, and let's sum the digits of each number. So for 10, it is going to be 1 plus 0, which is equal to 1, and it is not prime. For 11, it is 1 plus 1, which is equal to 2, and it is a prime number. For 12, it is 1 plus 2 equals 3, which is not a, which is also a prime number, and so on until 19. So here you can see there are only four prime numbers, which are 2, 3, 5, and 7, and hence the answer for our test case was 4. So the brute force way to solve this problem is that we iterate for all the numbers between n1 and n2 and we see for each number we'll get the sum of their digits and we'll see if this comes out to be a prime number or not and the time complexity for this is going to be n log n here the base of logarithm is 10 actually now this is not going to pass the time limit if n1 and n2 are of the order of 10 to the power 8 which is which is the case actually and it is given in the scotch constraints so how do we optimize it? So yeah, the obvious answer is digit DP. So before jumping into the solution, let's look at a couple of key observations. Since maximum value of n1 and n2 is less than 10 to power 8, therefore the maximum value of n1 and n2 can be this number, this 9 repeated 8 times. Hence, the maximum sum of digits we'll get is 9 into 8, which is equal to 72. Therefore, what we'll do is that we'll pre-compute all prime numbers from 0 to 72 using C of error schemes. And if you don't know about this algorithm, I have attached the link to this in the description section. And apart from that, how we are going to compute the final answer. So usually for range based problems, we take this approach. We count, we'll count the number of numbers till n1 minus 1, whose sum of digits is a prime number. And let's denote that count by n1. We'll do a similar thing for n2 and we'll count the number of count we'll have the count of numbers till n2 whose sum of digits is a prime number. Let's denote that count by n2. So our final answer is going to be count of n2 minus count of n1. Now, let's look at the concept of digit dp in a bit detail which would actually help us in formulating the solution for this problem. So in digit dp, we represent each number as a sequence of digits from most significance to least significant digit. So what does this statement mean? This means that say if your n is equal to 35,672. So we'll represent n as a sequence of digits and we'll represent it from most significant to least significant digits. So n is going to be this array 3, 5, 6, 7, 2. Now the basic idea is that we start from 0th index and try putting all possible digits at each inject at each index until we have reached at the last index of digit sequence. So what does this statement means is that we start from 0th position and we'll try putting all the possible digits at each index until we have reached the end of this array. Of course, I if n contains only 5 digits, I cannot place more than 5 digits because most probably this is going to give us a number which is greater than n and yeah the only case it won't give a number which is not greater than n if any of the numbers here happens to be zero that is if you say put zero on the first index then yeah there is a possibility that it won't be greater than n. and the other thing is that by following this technique listed in bullet point four so if the number such form satisfy all the constraints in the problem then we say that yes we have found one such number so let's look at this in a bit detail Say that your n is 35,672 as given in the previous slide. Now at 0th index, I can only put 0, 1, 2 or 3. I cannot put anything greater than 3 at 0th index. And the reason behind that is, say if I put 4 on the z on 0th index, so my resultant number which will be formed will be of the form 4xxx. And you can see that it is going to be surely greater than n. Now there are two things. If I put 0, 1 or 2 at the 0th index, then it is guaranteed that whatever digit I'll put on the subsequent indices, my actual number which will be formed is going to be less than n. And you can see that with the help of this example given in last point. Say that I place 2 on 0th index. Now if even if I place on the subsequent positions, even if I place a, the highest digit which is 9, I'll get the resultant number is 29,999 and this is surely greater than 35,672. But the case with 3 is a little different. When you are placing a digit at a particular index which is actually equal to that digit in the corresponding number here the n is 35672 and 
that zero th index the number which is present is three. Say that in your number which you are going to form, you place three on zero th index. Then the resultant number will be of the form three x x x x, which in certain scenarios can be greater than n. Like one of the scenario is that if you put nine on all the subsequent positions, then your number would be thirty nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine, which is surely greater than given n, and it would violate our constraint that. the resultant number should be less than n so how do we ensure that number formed is not greater than n well the thing is that on the second index if i have placed 3 on the zeroth index and now on the first index i cannot place anything greater than 5 because say if i place 6 my number is going to be of the form 36 xxx and you can see this is surely greater the resultant number which would be formed will be surely greater than n and the other thing is that if you place anything less than 4 then it is guaranteed anything less than 5 on the first index then it is guaranteed that your resultant number will be less than n say if you placed 4 on the first index so your resultant number is of the form 34 xxx which is surely less than n but again if you place 5 on the first position so you are back to the props of problem which is listed in point number 1 so if i generalize this thing how do we determine which digits to place on ith position the basic idea is that if we are on ith index then we may or may not be able to place all digits from 0 to 9 so what are the scenarios where i can place all digits from 0 to 9 on ith position if for any index j where 0 is less than equal to j is less than i the digit placed on jth position is less than the corresponding digit in the actual number n then you can place any digits between 0 to 9 in ith position and if you didn't understand this i'll try to explain it with this example here your on zeroth index the number was 3 and now i have placed say 2 on my the zeroth index for subsequent indexes i can now place anything between 0 to 9 and this is what actually means here that if for any index j where 0 is less than equal to j is less than either digit placed on jth position is less than corresponding digit in actual number n then you can place any digit between 0 to 9 on ith position but when it is not possible to place all digits from 0 to 9 on ith position the scenario is if for all indices j where 0 is less than equal to j is less than i the digit placed at index j is equal to the corresponding digit in the number n then we can only place digits less than or equal to the corresponding digit at ith position in number n and if we didn't understand this let's look at with this thing here on 0th index the number was 3 so in my resultant number if i place 3 on 0th index now i am looking what should i place on the first index so i see that for all indices j which are less than 1 and there is only such one such index which is 0 i see i have placed number which is equal to the corresponding digit in number n so now i am restricted here i cannot place anything any digit between 0 to 9 on first position i can only place numbers from 0 to 5 and i explained it here that if i place any say 6 here which is greater than 5 the resultant number is 36xxx which will be greater than r n so please guys uh, if you didn't understand this try going over this again and i have also made another tutorial in digit dp you can also check that for references but this is a very crucial part in understanding the solution if you understand this bit by bit you can practically solve all the digit dp problems now let's look at the original solution say that we are on we are on ith position and we have computed all the values of sum of digits possible till i minus 1th position how would we build our solution for ith position using the previously built solutions that is using all the sub problems which have occurred before that so there are a couple of things to consider i have to determine the range of digits first is that i have to determine the range of digits which i can place on ith position that is whether i can place all digits between 0 to 9 or whether i am restricted so for this what i'll do is i'll use a boolean variable is less than and if is less than is true then it denotes that i can place all digits from 0 to 9 on ith position and this is because when i was placing digits from 0 to i minus 1 i have already ensured that my resultant number is going to be less than n and that is this first case this one this case and apart from that if is less than is false then i am restricted then i can only place digits which are less than or equal to the corresponding digit in n so what are the states which i need in my dynamic programming solution well the first state is obviously the position at which i am placing the digit denoted by i 
which would be denoted by i here. The second state is the sum of digits from till ith position because I need to keep track of that. And the third thing is is less than state which I have explained you in the previous slide. So is less than is actually going to make sure that your resultant number so formed is always less than n. So before uh, let me give you an example say that if n is equal to 8 and you need to find all numbers which are less than equal to 8 and the digits of whose are a prime number. So as I have explained in my slide that there are three states i, sum and is less than. So i is 0 here uh, because the only possible value for i can be 0 because there is only one digit in n. Now I start iterating over all the possible digits that is 0 to 9. So I place 1. Now I have placed 1 which is surely less than n. So uh, my is less than is true and the count of the numbers become 1. So you see here, uh, this is i, that is 0th index which on which I am placing the digit. This is the sum of digit. I have placed 1, so sum of the digit is 1 only. And true denotes that my number is has become less than n. So that count is 1. Now I place 2 on 0th index and denoting, uh, placing 2 means that it has already become less than n. So is less than is true and the count is again 1. I place 3. Now again the sum of digits will be 3 only and is less than will be 2 and this will continue until 7 but when I am placing 8 on 0th position this is a bit tricky now the problem uh, the number which is going to be formed is not actually less than n it can be equal to n so therefore is less than is false now and the count of that would be 1 so now I have computed all my digit tp states the thing is that how do I ensure how do I get my g1 numbers? So g1 numbers are nothing but you just have to iterate over all of these and see which values of sum are a prime number. So here the only prime numbers are 2, 3, 5 and 7. So your count of g1 numbers is 4. Now this is actually the base case in your uh, dp solution. So if you understand this, let's see how I can generalize this thing. So say that I have computed my answer till i minus 1 and now I am computing the answer for ith state. So this only represents the uh, dp code for the ith state. This does not represent the complete solution and it is not the pseudo code but it is actually code written in python syntax. I prefer python because it is same as English language and so yeah. A couple of things here. Here uh, in this code the maximum variable denotes uh, is equal to 73 and this is 73 because we discussed that the maximum sum we can obtain is only 72 because uh, the constraint is that n1 and n2 are less than 10 to power 8 and you might be wondering why this is 73 because uh, the count of numbers between 0 to 72 is 73 actually and here n is uh, three, as I said 35,672 and digits array actually represent the sequence of digits in n. So let's see how we'll compute the answer for i state. I start iterating over all the possible digits that is from 0 to 10 and this range function in python h actually returns numbers which are uh, greater than or equal to start and less than end. So it would actually return numbers 0 to 9. Now for each digit I am placing I will iterate over all the possible values of sum and that is the maximum, uh, the minimum value of sum now formed will be at least j because I have placed a digit day j so that would be at least the value of sum and the maximum sum I can get is this maximum value which is uh, 72 actually. Now uh, the digit dp of ith state would be, see if I have computed my answer for i minus 1th state and I know that when I was placing digits still 0 to i minus 1 my number has already become my resultant number has already become less than n. So this is 1 here. So digit dp i sum 1 would be uh, plus it would be incremented by this quantity. And why this quantity? Because I am taking the value at i minus 1th position and the sum is sum minus j because we are computing the answer for ith position at with the value of sum and if you have placed j at the ith position so j is contributing into the sum 
which has come due to the digit placed on ith position so till i minus 1 the only sum which we can take is sum minus j and this one actually denotes that number has actually become less than i so since this is 1 so for i yth state also this will be 1 this cannot be 0 because the number has already become less than n there is no way we can make it greater than n or equal to n here now if the number has not become less than n so this thing is 0 here we will computing the answer of ith state here uh, with i minus 1 state so if on ith state you are placing a digit j which is actually less than the corresponding digit in number n so now again it is guaranteed that the resultant number which would be found will be less than n so therefore this quantity i sum 1 therefore here the value of less than for this ith position is 1 because we have ensured by placing j which is less than the corresponding digit in at position i that this the resultant number is going to be less than 1 and if j is equal to equal to digits i so for this case what we are doing is that uh, on i minus 1 at position if we have obtained a number which is still not less than n and i place a number digit at ith position which is uh, equal to the corresponding digit in ith position number n so it means that my number has still not become less than n so this therefore this is zero here so this way you have computed the answer for the ith state so uh, the com apart from that so that previous solution which will only con compute you the digit dp state for computing the given numbers what we will do is that we will iterate over all the possible values of sum we will see if that value of sum is a prime number this prime sum we can pre-compute by using c of eta schemes and we see uh, we will actually increment the quantity of g1 numbers by the digit db value which is at the uh, last position and the value of sum and both possible values of is less than because in the end your resultant number whatever it would be formed whether the value of uh, is less than is 1 or 0 it is guaranteed that the number would be less than equal to n I mean that was the prop use of this is less than variable so uh, I would be attached so this is the actual this is actually the python code for this problem I would be attaching it in the description section so I just wanted to give a heads up this is main program this first it would main method function and it would first compute sieve all the prime numbers using the sieve algorithm and this is the algorithm for that after that what we would do is that we will take the input for this and we will compute the g1 number so how we are computing g1 numbers here is that I first compute the digit dp state so for using digit dp I am first computing the list of digits that is the sequence of digits in number n from most significant digit to least significant digit so this method is for doing that compute digit list compute digit dp would use the same algorithm I will explained in the PPT the only difference is uh, that that it would iterate over all possible values of i that is from 1 to the uh, length of the digits present in the digits list and this digits list we have computed here by this method and we have already this is actually computing the base case which I explained you here uh, the base case which I explained you here is actually being computed by this part of the code that it iterates over all the possible uh, values of i which are less than the digit present on the zeroth position and it would do digit tp0 i11 is equal to 1 and when it is placing the digit which is equal to 0 the digit at zeroth position uh, it would do this yeah so eventually we'll compute the this digit dp and then we use this digit dp to compute g1 numbers so i'll be attaching this program in the description section and apart from that uh, there are two more related digit dp problems on squash uh, they are they go by the name of lucifer and ravan and i have included the link of these problems in the description section so i'll encourage you all to solve these both as well after solving this problem which i have explained in this video so thank you guys for watching please don't forget to like subscribe and comment on this video and i'll see you next time